anyone else just ignore their front door when you don't feel like talking to other humans? All right, so today we're going to be talking about products that suck. This stuff didn't work out for me. Don't think it's worth your money. I'm just going to give you kind of like my mini reviews on everything. I recently did my current favorites video and in that video I said I had so many products that I've been just testing out that haven't been working for me that I was going to do a whole separate video on it and so we are here. That is this video. I did film this makeup look as well so that video will be coming in a week or two probably but if you're excited for this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here you can join the Bayredo family and subscribe. I upload every single Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So normally I just include my rejects in my monthly raves and rejects videos, but because I had been pre-filming a ton for 15 days of foundation and just all this stuff, I hadn't filmed one of those videos in a few months, so I just kind of like collected all of the rejects and kind of like product fails, and we have a lot to talk about. I mean... We've got a whole bin here, folks. Doesn't mean that it couldn't work out for you. You might love one of the things I talk about in this video, and that is great. That's why we are different people. We all have different opinions. These are just my experiences with products, so here we go. This first thing here is by Polish Choice. It's the Hydrating Gel to Cream Cleanser. It says it quickly and gently removes makeup, and it has a milky emulsion that smooths and softens. I just did not find this to remove my makeup well at all. Every single time I use this, I still had tons of like black underneath my eyes, and my face makeup too. I don't know, it just really didn't feel like it was getting everything off. And it also just left my skin feeling pretty stripped, so I just think there are way better makeup removing products out there. Next up is a product that's actually a new release from First Aid Beauty. This is their Ultra Repair Hyaluronic Hydrating Primer. The sound of this, I thought, heck yeah, I cannot wait to put this on my face. Hyaluronic acid, hydrating, sign me up. I usually really like First Aid Beauty products. I cannot believe the scent of this made it through multiple people. Like, I don't know how they approved the scent of this because it is so fragranced, you guys. Oh my god, it smells like a watermelon Jolly Rancher on crack. Like, it literally makes me want to gag. I don't mind the actual, like, watermelon scent. It's just that there's so much of it that it's so extremely overpowering, and you can smell it through your foundation. The look of the primer was really nice. Like, it did feel super hydrating, super glowy. It created, like, a nice base. The other thing that just blows my mind about this is that on the back, it says no artificial fragrance. I don't know what the heck they put in here then because... Oh my god, I don't know how you get that fragrance naturally. It's almost like nauseating. It's so incredibly strong. Next up is a product that I've been testing for a long time now, probably like at least six months, and I keep trying to make it work for me, and it just looks crappy on my skin. This is the Ilia Sheer Vivid Tinted Moisturizer SPF 20. I reviewed one of their foundations, I think in two series ago, 15 Days of Foundation, but based on the reviews and everything, I thought maybe I would like the tinted moisturizer better, so I picked this up. First off, it smells horrible. It smells like some kind of chemical, but just the finish of it and how it sits on my skin for being like a more sheer tinted moisturizer product, it looks awful. It really emphasizes my texture. It doesn't smooth out anything. It's also very sticky. It's just an all around pass for me on this one. And this is pricey. I wanna say this is around like $40, maybe even a little bit more. Better option for me is the NARS tinted moisturizer or the Jouer one. Both of those are beautiful. Another very pricey product that I don't think is worth the money is the Tatcha Rice Polish. This is the deep one. I actually have every like different version of this one because they sent it in PR. And this is supposed to be like a exfoliating kind of powder that you put in your hands, rub on your face with a little bit of water, and it's supposed to just exfoliate your skin. It's not exfoliating at all. It's like a super, super gentle exfoliation to the point where I don't feel like I'm getting any exfoliating. And I also find this to be super stripping on my skin. I don't think it really does a whole lot of anything. So this is a foaming enzyme powder. It also doesn't foam at all on my skin. You're supposed to massage it in with water for 15 seconds. Just does a whole lot of nothing for me and for the price pass. So this is a new skincare product by Makeup Revolution and I actually tested this in a vlog and I have updated thoughts now that I've used it more. I didn't like it in the vlog initially. I said it didn't do anything and this is bizarre. So this is a 30% AHA BHA peeling solution. It's supposed to be like the ordinary one or the drunk elephant one and this when you first put it on like in my first impression of it in the vlog once I washed it off it it's very odd. It just like comes off your face in the water. I've never experienced that kind of like consistency to where you don't really need to rub it off. It just comes off your face. It doesn't feel like anything. You can't see any kind of difference. You can't feel any kind of difference. But this caused me to massively 
peel like two or three days later. Both the Drunk Elephant one and the Ordinary one don't do that to my skin, but I still get the results from the BHA and AHA in there. So I feel like because this one made me peel so much more and just like completely dried out my skin, I would not go with this one over the Ordinary one. The Ordinary one is also super affordable. If you're kind of like debating this because of the price point, I would say just go with the Ordinary one. Wow, my battery light has been flashing for like a solid two minutes. I keep like waiting for the camera to die. We're still going strong. This is a new bronzer by Morphe. It's the Glamour Bronze. I don't have have a problem with the formula of this. The issue is the shade. I don't understand why brands can't do not super orange toned light shades of bronzer. It's like they're not testing it on any kind of like light skin tones because it just pulls friggin' orange. Like this one's not even like an orange tone. It's just straight up orange. I've tried to make it work. Normally I can take my powder and like go over bronzer and this definitely helps with this one. It is just so orange that it's almost like not workable, which is why it's in this video. This product I had high hopes for. This is the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Tea Tree Oil Scalp Treatment. Basically this is supposed to help if you have like drier, itchy scalp, which I do. I get like dandruff sometimes and I do have an itchier scalp, especially with the MBR extensions in. Sometimes they can like make my scalp itchier. With the directions they give you in the formula of the product, it just doesn't work together. Basically, you're supposed to not rinse this out. It says treatment is supposed to be applied after washing and before styling. So after washing makes me think on damp hair. It doesn't say. I've tried it both on dry hair and damp hair. And the formula of this is basically like super thin but sticky and it doesn't dry down, which is my main issue. So for being a product that you're supposed to put on your roots, you can just feel it in your hair and it gets really sticky. So I would never wear this on like fresh hair because it just makes your hair feel super dirty and sticky. If this was supposed to be applied as a treatment that you leave in for like an hour before washing your hair, then I think that would make a lot more sense. I almost feel like they need to just redo this product and make it like that because most people don't want a kind of like sticky scalp treatment in their hair on freshly washed hair. So I did try it that way too and I just felt like it didn't do a whole lot for my scalp. So I don't know, this one just didn't work out for me. Maybe it works out for you. It does smell really good. Next up is the Garnier Skin Active Glow Boost. This is a two-in-one facial mask and scrub. So I have tried it both ways. I initially tried it as a facial scrub and was super underwhelmed. It completely stripped my skin. It also just has the oddest like thick kind of jelly consistency to it. And then as a face mask, it just doesn't spread. It's like super thick and gloopy. So you do need to kind of like wet your face and then kind of like rub it into your skin in order for it to like stay on there. And again, it didn't do anything. It actually made my skin super dry and it completely stripped it. I didn't see any kind of glow from it and I also didn't like the exfoliation. And it also smells super strong, super fragrant, smells like apricot. So the past couple months, I've been testing out tons of new concealers because there were a lot of concealer launches and just ones that I wanted to try out and see what I thought of them. One of those was the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer. There's other concealers in here that I don't like, but this one is like the standout, I don't get it kind of concealer. This looks so dry, so patchy. Fenty Beauty face products just have not worked out for me. I do have their matchsticks here that I haven't tried yet, so I'm excited to try these out and see how they work, but their foundation and now their concealer just looks horrible on my skin. There's something about it. They're so drying. And I also don't get like any kind of coverage with this concealer. I posted on Twitter a couple months ago kind of sharing like my thoughts on this and a lot of you guys agreed and said you didn't understand this one. So I feel like I'm not alone in this one. This is a newer release from Laura Mercier. This came out like a month or so ago. This is the Magic Hour Face Illuminator palette. So when I first used this and I like swatched it, it looks like it's going to be really pretty. When you blend this onto your skin, it almost like disappears. I'm all for a good like subtle highlight, but this one just disappears and then what's left over is almost like a not chunky, but it just really emphasizes the texture, what does show up. Maybe the darker shades in here are way better. I haven't tried any of them because they don't work for my skin tone, but maybe those shades work better. I don't know, but the lightest shade did not work. Okay, this thing was awful. I think this was from West Elm. I'm pretty sure West Elm is the one that sent this. They sent like a spa kind of package thing. This is so bad. This is their Manuka Honey Cleansing Balm. The sound of that it sounded great. I love honey scent and I love Manuka products usually. So this is supposed to be, 
Wow, that, that would have been a good ASMR sound. I'm all for like a good thick cleansing balm. This thing is so thick and you can't really blend it out. I was thinking, okay, maybe it's like coconut oil where you have to like really work it into your skin and then it'll kind of like thin out and warm up and it just does not, it stays very thick and sticky. You can't rub it into your skin enough to really take off the makeup or cleanse your skin, even if you're using it as like a facial cleanser. And then once the water hits it to wash this off, it leaves the weirdest sticky film all over your face that you can knock it off. I had to wash my face literally four or five times with different cleansers to remove this stuff off my face. It's like glue, it just like stays on there. So super odd formula. Definitely would not recommend. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands. I didn't really think through how I was gonna open the door with Manuka honey all over my hands. Next up is a makeup product that I know a lot of people really like. So this one just didn't work out for my skin. I find that especially like foundation, powders, concealers, those are all so personal. It just depends on what you like, how it looks on your skin. Foundations can look completely different on different people's skin. So this was the Bare Minerals Original Powder. I did a whole foundation Friday on this where I tested it out and I continued to test it after that video at least 10 different times I wore it, whether it was on its own or as a powder, like to set my face. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll like this better as a setting powder and it'll add some coverage. This just looks crappy on my skin. It looks super drying. It doesn't give me any kind of like subtle glow that some people talk about. It doesn't give me coverage. I just don't... I don't like it. I almost didn't even want to mention this one because I'm just so sick of the whole natural deodorant discussion, but I tried the La Vanilla deodorant. I actually got this from TJ Maxx. It's vanilla passion fruit. First of all, the scent of this just in here smells like straight up BO. Oh my God, it smells so bad to me. I think it was like sealed in TJ Maxx so I couldn't smell it, but it literally smells like BO just on the stick. I know sometimes there's like a detox process with your body and natural deodorants, but you guys, I literally got out of the shower, applied this, and I smelled less than 30 minutes later. I wasn't even like sweating yet, I just smelled. I don't think I'm the natural deodorant kind of gal. I don't think I can do it Again, even if I went through that whole process, just knowing my body and everything, I'm like a men's deodorant, Old Spice kind of gal. I feel like everyone who's like anti-deodorant and anti-aluminum and everything doesn't have actual BO or else you would understand that sometimes it's like literally not possible. <laughs> even men's deodorant I have a really hard time with working, so I just don't have that kind of body chemistry. Next up is a product that I tested in a Weird Products at Ulta video. This is the Igloo Premium Lash Glue from Kiss. I don't understand like the concept of this one. It's not that the eyelash glue was particularly horrible. Like it stays on, it keeps your lashes on, but you do feel this like cooling sensation on the lash band, which almost irritates my eyes and it just feels very odd. Something that smells like straight up self tanner. This is the Too Faced Peach Frost Melting Powder Highlighter. I am so confused. This literally smells exactly like a super strong self tanner smell. If I really liked the actual product, I would overlook it, but this was something that I thought I might like on no makeup makeup days where I'm not wearing foundation. A lot of the times I'll just wear concealer and then put on like some kind of highlighter on my cheekbones. It gives you like virtually no glow and even then it sits on top of your skin so you can just see the cream product sitting on your cheekbones or wherever you apply it and it almost emphasizes your pores. Next up is a hair product that kind of shocked me because usually IGK products work really well for my hair. I usually love the way they smell. I love the way they make my hair look and feel. And I think this is the first IGK product that really hasn't worked out for me. This is the Car Service Blowout Balm. It says it's a unique formula that offers style memory, body, and easy workability. Ultra smooth, shiny. This made my hair feel so dry, so unmanageable, and I literally like couldn't work with my hair. Usually I can put something else in to make it kind of like workable. This one, I kind of just had to give up. Like I put my hair in a bun and then rewashed it the next day to get it out because I just really couldn't make this work and it just made my hair feel super dry. So this product was in my bin, but I could not remember if I've already talked to you guys about it. I think I like mentioned it 
in another video. I didn't fully talk about it, so I'm gonna mention it today. This is the Tatcha Pure One Step Camellia Cleansing Oil. I have this in PR. My main issue with this one is that it just fully strips my skin. It just makes my skin feel super dry afterwards. And this is really pricey. I think this is the smaller version, but the full size of this is really expensive. I kind of kept it in my shower for a while thinking like, okay, it's Tatcha. I'll use it up. And every time I used it, it really just did not work out for my skin and it made my skin feel worse. So then I figured... It's not worth putting on my face. I'll donate it. So if you have dry skin, I would pass on that one for sure. This e.l.f. blush, which is new, it's their primer infused blush in the shade Always Cheeky. It almost is one of those powder products that like lifts up the coverage underneath and it's very sheer, which normally I don't have an issue with blushes if they're sheer because I almost like it because you can like build it up and you have more control. On my skin, it almost like disappears and looks a little bit patchy as you blend it out and it also lifts up that coverage underneath. Someone's knocking at my door anyone else just ignore their front door when you don't feel like talking to other humans? I'll just sit in my room and talk to myself instead. I had high hopes for this one because I thought it was supposed to be kind of like the buxom primer infused blush that just launched that I love, but it is not like that. This is by Jouer. It's the Smoothing Sugar Lip Balm. Lip scrub, not lip balm. I have really particular things I look for in a lip scrub because I don't like them to leave like a super waxy film and I want to really like scrub and get it off and I find a lot of them are just too gentle and this is one of those that it doesn't do a whole lot of anything. Grains are just so fine that it literally just feels like a lip balm with like a tiny bit of grit to it but not nearly enough where you can scrub your lips and it'll do any kind of exfoliating. It smells really good. It smells like sugar cookie and vanilla or something. Right and then the last product is this Move and Chill Nail Polish Eraser Cream. I tested this and did like a first impressions in the Ulta weird makeup video and then I tried it again because some of you said maybe it was because I had shellac underneath it. Maybe that was like affecting it. Maybe it needs to use like the warmth of my nail bed or something. So I tried it on again when I wasn't wearing shellac in between going to the salon and it did the same thing. It did not work. If you didn't see that video, basically you're supposed to put this cream on, let it chill there, and then it's supposed to just come off with like a cotton pad. It just doesn't work. You have to leave it on way longer than they say. It just doesn't work as well as acetone. The only benefit to this one I can see over an acetone nail polish remover is that it doesn't smell at all. It just smells like a hand cream. Acetone is the way to go in my book. So those are all of the kind of like standout bad products that I just don't think is worth your money. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Now you know what not to buy, but if you want to know what to buy, I'll link my current favorites video in the eye and down below. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.